Hey guys, welcome back to Cruise Blog. It's Allie, and today I'm going to be sharing about my experience on board Carnival's newest ship, Carnival Jubilee. I'll be sharing 14 things that I loved and hated about this brand new ship. Let's get into it. They say everything's bigger in Texas, and that is certainly the case for the newest cruise ship in town, Carnival Cruise Line's Carnival Jubilee. As the sister ship to Carnival Celebration and Mardi Gras, the glamorous Carnival Jubilee made her eagerly anticipated debut in December 2023. And while there are many things to love about this cutting-edge cruise ship, not everything was a slam dunk for me during my fun-filled spring break cruise on board. Here are 14 things that I loved and hated about Carnival Jubilee. Up first is something that I loved, and that was the tons of tasty dining options. Carnival Cruise Line is known for its mouth-watering dining options, and Carnival Jubilee was no exception. With 21 restaurants on board, we barely scratched the surface of Jubilee's array of dining during our short seven-night sailing. My absolute favorite restaurant on Carnival Jubilee is Big Chicken, which serves up incredibly delicious crispy chicken tenders and sandwiches. I couldn't help myself from going back for more and more during my cruise. Everything we tried was served so hot and flavorful. Other quick dining options include Guy's Burger Joint for juicy burgers, Burgers, fresh tacos from Blue Iguana Cantina, Pig's Guy and Anchor Smokehouse Barbecue, Java Blue Cafe, Beach Buns for Sandwiches, and Coastal Slice for Carnival's Pizza. For sit-down options, Carnival Jubilee has plenty of included options for dinner in the evenings. This includes the main dining rooms, which are named Pacific and Atlantic, the Asian-Mexican fusion at Chibang, and homestyle Italian at Cucina del Capitano. I won't sugarcoat the fact that I had a hearty appetite on this cruise, and for good reason. Everything we ate on board was fantastic, and the dining experience was definitely a highlight of our cruise. But one thing I hated about the food again was the boring Lido Marketplace Buffet. This is one area where Carnival Jubilee fell short for me in the Lido Marketplace Buffet. Aside from their freshly made gelato where they have flavors that rotate daily and some very yummy layered cakes, the Lido Market Buffet was disappointing for me. I have honestly never loved Carnival's Buffet for my prior cruises, including their sister ships, Carnival Celebration and Mardi Gras. Although there may be different stations for food, it just feels like every station serves the same items. With a lack of variety, the food here just just never really appealed to me. I also avoided the Little Marketplace buffet in the morning for breakfast because there was always long lines and very busy crowds. Luckily, there are many other places on board to eat, so this wasn't an issue. Another thing that I loved about Carnival Jubilee were the shows at center stage. Carnival Jubilee has been built with technology at its core. Spanning over three decks in the middle of the ocean, Grand Central is one of the most unique zones on board. Along with bars and restaurants surrounding Grand Central, the heart of the ship's entertainment is at center stage. Floor to ceiling windows and dazzling LED screens come together to create center stage, which is home to some of the best entertainment that I have seen with Carnival Cruise Line. The main production show at center stage was Rio Carnival, which was a new to me production show. The flashy headliner show was filled with over the top costumes, bright colors, and Latin music. The high energy spectacle included incredible singing, dancing, and even some aerialists. I loved every moment of this show. But one thing I hated about the entertainment on Carnival Jubilee was the lack of new production shows. After being so impressed with the entertainment on Carnival Celebration and Mardi Gras, I was really eager to see the new production shows on board Carnival Jubilee. Unfortunately, many of the headliner shows were repeats from other Excel class ships. For example, production shows like Celestial Strings and We Are One, these are not unique to Carnival Jubilee, as these can both be found on the other Excel class ships. The only new playlist production shows on Carnival Jubilee include Dear Future Husband and Soulbound. Although I had never seen Rio Carnival before, the headliner show is apparently also on Carnival Celebration. When we sailed on Carnival Celebration back in 2022, this show was not on board, but it's still a repeat. Both Mardi Gras and Carnival Celebration have exclusive shows that are only offered on board these ships, so I was a little surprised and disappointed that Carnival Jubilee didn't have its own exclusive show. All right, one thing that I loved on Carnival Jubilee was our Cove Balcony Cabin. During our seven night cruise on Carnival Jubilee, we booked a Cove Balcony Cabin on deck five. This was my first time cruising in a Cove Balcony, which is slightly different than a traditional balcony. Cove Balconies have an arch, Cove style enclosure, and they offer a more private veranda space. 
These cabins are also closer to the ocean compared to other balconies, so it's definitely a more unique cabin experience. While I normally stay in a cheap interior cabin, splurging to have a cove balcony was totally worth the cost for me. It was an additional $300 per person to upgrade to the cove balcony from our cheaper interior cabin. We loved having more space in our stateroom with 200 square feet inside and a 50 square foot balcony. The Cove balcony was functional, stylish, and modern. We particularly appreciated the well-designed bathroom and the expansive walk-in shower. One thing that we hated though was the cabin temperature control. I had read online before boarding that others were struggling with temperature control in their cabins on board Carnival Jubilee. This was not really an issue that I had encountered on other Excel class ships, so I was interested to see if we would find our cabin to feel stuffy or hot. From the start, we had our air conditioning running nonstop in our balcony stateroom. While the room was cool for the most part, there were times in the night where I did feel a little bit hot and I struggled to sleep because of it. Even with the air conditioner running constantly, I was surprised that the room was not able to stay cooler. So if you're cruising on Carnival Jubilee and you like to have a cold room when you sleep, I would suggest maybe bringing a fan. Another thing that we loved on our cruise was having so much included in the cruise fare. One of my favorite aspects about cruising with Carnival Cruise Line in general is having so much included in your cruise fare. Not only is Carnival Cruise Line one of the most affordable cruise lines, the cruise fares really include so much on board. For example, almost all of the onboard attractions are complimentary other than the $15 rides on Bolt. Complimentary attractions include a thrilling ropes course, mini golf, water slides, a sports court, and more. Almost everywhere on board is included in your fare for restaurants as well, with the exception of just a few specialty dining options. It was so easy not to spend extra money on board Carnival Jubilee other than having an occasional cocktail here or there. One thing I hated though was having long lines and busy crowds. Our cruise on Carnival Jubilee was sailing at around 90% capacity with 5,900 passengers on board. With so many guests, I hated having to wait in lines all the time and to deal with these busy crowds. For example, if I wanted my morning specialty latte from Java Blue Cafe, there was always a huge line. While I was willing to fork out $7 every single morning for a latte, the line deterred me almost every single morning. Even though the service there was quick, there were simply so many people wanting to get specialty coffees in the morning that this made it really easy for me to save money at least and say no. Additionally, we had to arrive to the headliner shows anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes early to get a spot. There's no reservations on Carnival Cruise Line for their entertainment, so you really just have to bank on showing up early to get a seat. With such a crowded cruise, there was never enough seating for everyone. This was especially true at Center Stage, which has always been a sore spot for crowd control on Excel ships in my mind. Finally, we had the longest wait times for dinner on Jubilee compared to the other ships that we have sailed on. We waited 40 plus minutes to dine at Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse. This was the case both times that we ate here for dinner for barbecue. Also, Sea Day Brunch had wait times upwards of 45 to 50 minutes. And while we loved Sea Day Brunch on our first morning on board, we found that the wait times on the other sea days were too long, so we opted to skip. One thing I did love so much about Carnival Jubilee though was her Texas style touches on board. Carnival Cruise Line was the first major cruise line to sail from Galveston, Texas back in 2000. Now Carnival Jubilee is the first ever ship that was built specifically to sail from Texas. With Carnival Jubilee being home ported in Galveston, there are plenty of special Texas style touches on board. Around every corner, you can find small touches that pay homage to Texas. When boarding the ship, there's a cute sign that said, it's a Jubilee y'all. In addition, you can find appropriately themed Carnival Jubilee merchandise with all things Texas in the Carnival shop. You can even find the Texas star on Carnival Jubilee's bow, showcasing the cruise line's commitment to Texas. One thing I hated though about Carnival Jubilee in regards to Texas, was the difficulty getting to Galveston. I had never cruised from Galveston before, so I was eager to see how the embarkation and disembarkation process would go. I didn't realize that Galveston is actually quite far from Houston, especially with traffic. From our hotel, which was near the Houston Hobby Airport, it took almost an hour to get to the cruise port in Galveston. While Houston's Hobby Airport is located within 45 minutes of Galveston, the George Bush International is further north of the city with a 90 minute drive. If you're planning to fly into Houston, the Hobby Airport is more convenient for cruises departing from Galveston. However, you will be more limited with flight options from Houston unless you choose to fly on Southwest Airlines. 
Because of this, my only flight option was a 5.30 p.m. flight after disembarking Carnival Jubilee. It took nearly an hour for us to successfully grab an Uber or Lyft from the port, even though we attempted to schedule one the night before. I was thankful though that my flight wasn't earlier as the congestion in Galveston and the competition for ride sharing was very stressful. I much prefer to cruise from Fort Lauderdale with the airport's proximity to the cruise port. I can easily take a flight normally at 10 a.m. from there and get back to my home in the Florida Panhandle by 3 p.m. Even cruises from Miami feel easier to access compared to Galveston. For this cruise, I wasn't able to get back home until 11 p.m., which made for a very long day once you disembark. But one thing I loved about Carnival Jubilee was her stylish and modern design. After sailing on Carnival Celebration back in November 2022, I was absolutely floored by Carnival's ability to design a modern and stylish cruise ship. I had only ever sailed on Carnival Cruises older ships like Carnival Fantasy and Ecstasy, and Carnival Sunshine, these were all pretty outdated. For years, Carnival resisted the industry shift towards building bigger and more innovative ships. This resulted in ship classes that were very close to one another, nearly identical, and they lacked innovation overall. With the debut of the Excel class, Carnival Cruise Line has started a new and exciting era of ship design. Carnival Jubilee, much like her sister ships, is truly stunning. The design on board is centered around the ocean, such as the new Currents Zone designed to be under the sea. It's evident that Carnival focused on the ship's design, decor, and ambiance. I would describe the design as modern 90s retro with just enough pops of color and neon throughout. One of the things that I didn't like was that the windows in Grand Central were closed for almost the entire cruise. Speaking of Carnival Jubilee zones, one of my favorites is Grand Central. This is the heart and soul of Carnival Jubilee with the multi-story venue called Center Stage. While the production shows here were excellent, one of the design elements of the area that I loved most on the sister ships were the floor to ceiling windows. I hated that Carnival Jubilee didn't have these windows opened during our cruise, as this provided beautiful natural light on the other ships. Only once did I see the windows uncovered, and it was apparently so monumental that the cruise line actually posted about it on social media. So this leads me to believe that the windows had yet to be uncovered on Jubilee, but the reason remains unknown to me. Either way, I prefer having these windows open during the day as it's a really wonderful place to relax and the natural light adds so much nice ambiance in there. One thing I loved though about Carnival Jubilee was the lively onboard parties. You guys know Carnival is known for having the most fun ships at sea. In fact, they refer to their vessels as the fun ships and all of the onboard activities are facilitated by the fun squad. With fun being at the center of Carnival's onboard experience, it should come as no surprise that the cruise line has massively fun parties. Of course, the fun starts from the moment you get on board and set sail during Carnival's iconic sail away party. While you might have attended other sail away parties on other cruise lines, you won't want to miss the craziness of Carnival's sail away party. With the DJ playing all of your favorite party tunes and everyone on board ready to have a great vacation, it is a wild party. In addition, two of the biggest parties on board took place on the top deck during the white hot night party and the 80s rock and glow party. During these mega parties, the pool deck transformed into a nightclub at sea and the people came ready to party. The pool deck was blasting with music with hundreds of guests dancing the night away. While this typically isn't my scene, it was amusing to be on the top deck and join in on the fun. If you're sailing on Carnival Jubilee, make sure to check out your fun times daily agenda to see when these parties take place. One thing I hated about our sailing though was the rowdy spring break crowd. Cruising during spring break is one of the peak times during the year to set sail for vacation. When I booked this cruise, I really didn't connect the dots that this was a spring break sailing because it was in early March. However, I quickly learned that our cruise was filled with spring breakers. While most of these were families cruising during spring break, we did see plenty of college students looking to have a good time too. We noticed a huge increase in security presence on board, which certainly signified that this was going to be a rowdy crowd that needed some control. Nothing ever felt out of control during our cruise, but the onboard vibe was definitely amplified. For example, we saw multiple people who needed wheelchairs after our visit to Cozumel. Of course, this can happen on any cruise when people have a lot of fun, but I have never seen so many as I did during this spring break cruise. Additionally, the hallways were super noisy in the night with drunk passengers. Luckily, I packed a portable sound machine to play white noise in the night, but I was surprised to hear the noise 
before going to bed each evening and the walls were a little more thin than I had anticipated. All right, everybody, that's all we have for today. Be sure and like and subscribe to Cruise Blog so you can be notified every time we have a new video. Comment below if you have sailed on Carnival Jubilee or one of her sister ships and whether or not you agree or disagree with my findings. Until next time, happy cruising.